Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer. This is Walk Time blog number 18. I'm here at the LCA, LCA Aftermath with Marco Ostini. G'day, I'm Marco. Um, I'm the project leader of Lunar Numbat and um, uh, basically Lunar Numbat is a collection of um, enthusiasts and, and open source hackers and coders and we're trying to make open source space science parts uh, for our benefit, for the benefit of White Label Space, who are a Google Lunar XPRIZE team, and for the benefit of anyone who would like to use these parts, so particularly Australian universities and, and educational organisations. Cool. Marco, could you tell me a bit about how Lunar Numbat came about and you know, the other groups that it works with? So Lunar Numbat came about because of a colleague of mine at work and I having a conversation about uh, the Google Lunar X Prize and what would be required um, to meet it, to, to, to do it. So the Google Lunar X Prize is um, a, a competition for uh, any non-government funded team, so a private team, to put a lander with a rover on the moon safely for it to travel half a kilometre and to send back high definition video and still images. And um, the prize has a cutoff date, or, or the, the landing is supposed to happen by 2015, um, with the, uh, the prize diminishing uh, after that. And uh, we thought, yeah, that. You know, as a, as a theoretical, as it's years away. That's right. That was <laughs> that was a couple of years ago. We had this conversation, so it seemed like plenty of time. Yeah. But um, it seemed like an interesting theoretical discussion. So over a number of morning teas, we um, this friend of mine who's a, um, a very well respected astronomer, we had a bunch of discussions about what would be required and the kinds of tools that existed that you could and couldn't use, and and um, and from there. Um, I thought that it, it seemed like something worth a bit of effort. So in 2009, I did a lightning talk at an LCA. That's where many good mm -hmm. things are born. And um, after that lightning talk, um, a collection of, of um, people that I'm very grateful to um, uh, came and saw me, in, including John and Al Andy Gelmy and uh, Lee Begg and um, a few other people. And we um, decided to see what we could do to uh, assist white label space, and so we're concentrating on uh, a number of parts to um, to see if that would help this particular team, white label space, who are a Google Lunar X Prize team, to see if it would help them with their um, their goal to win the Google Lunar X Prize. Now, um, white label space are one of I think it's 22 teams now. It may even be as high as 29. It, I think it depends on how you count it. Um, and they're based in Holland, but they have a bunch of Australian expats in them, so they're the only Google Lunar X Prize team with an Australian flag on their crest. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they've asked us to uh, assist with preparing throttle control avionics uh, for when the lander approaches the moon to control the throttle rate, uh, for a radar altimeter to see how far away the lander is from the, moon, the lunar surface, uh, to help with the high definition video and still transmission uh, from the moon, so it'd be um, quite a lot of data over very low bandwidth, and also um, as an aside, we're assisting them with preparing a, a monopropellant and a bipropellant rocket, which um, will be using uh, hydrogen peroxide and RP1, also known as kerosene. Okay. Well, you mentioned that it's one of the only teams, well, the only team that has an Australian flag in the crest. Now, Australia has got a big history with um, space technology. We've obviously had a lot of activity around Pumara, um de decades ago now. And we were involved in tracking for the Apollo program and various other things. How has it been trying to get this sort of initiative off the ground in Australia and get interest? Has there been uh, much interest from media or people wanting to get involved or any other groups? Australia does have a, a really proud early history in space science. I think we were the third nation in the world to um, put a satellite in orbit uh, under its own steam, and that was out of Woomera. Um, and um, at the time, that particular program was funded by the British government, so it wasn't. Uh, it was a lot of Australian ingenuity, but it was certainly with some external funding. Um, after the funding stopped, Woomera stopped itself. 
uh, and very little uh, space science of that kind has occurred in Australia. But to their uh, ongoing credit, the um, deep space uh, um, tracking fellows in um, Tidman Billa in, mm. in near Canberra, um, they've been doing magnificent work with NASA. Pretty much NASA depends on them for Southern Hemisphere communication. Mm -hmm. And um, they continue to this day to do some remarkable work, including they're the last connection between humanity and the Voyager um, ah, right. probes, uh, okay. one of which is the furthest man-made object away from space. So, cool. so those guys do some pretty awesome work. But um, And hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll, Australia will also win the Square Kilometre Array bid because mm -hmm. we have some real skill in that area. And, and lots of space. And <laughs> lots of quiet space, That's which right, would work really well. Background, uh, background Radiation, noise. Radiation, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, radio interference. Yeah. Um, but the Square Kilometre Array will, will not replace the fact that Australia, unfortunately, is still um, the only G20 nation in the world that uh, hasn't formed a space agency. So to um, phrase that a slightly different way, of all of the nations in the world that can afford to make the commitment to understand space better and also to support a local uh, space science industry mm. which will make a profit for the local economy, yes. we're the only nation that chooses not to do that. Mm. That's um, really sad. It is. It's sad and a bit frustrating because um, there are no shortage of smart people in Australia. Mm. And of those smart people, if they really, really want to work in space science, they have to leave Australia. Mm. Um, the few that I've met uh, who really did want to work in space science but wanted to stay close to their family mm. more uh, ended up working in IT or, or something else. Yeah. And so they had yeah. this long, lingering love to do <laughs> space science. But... Um, actually end up doing something else for mm. a living, which is kind of a shame. So there's, there's actually... Um, well, the dream is being kept alive a little bit by groups like ASRI. Yes, Australian mm. Space Research Institute. Uh, they're um, a volunteer organisation and um, ha they have existed for quite a long time. Uh, they have, in a sense, their lineage goes back to Woomera itself, to some of the engineers who work there. And um, they get together and work on... Um, building rockets and evaluating um, various missions and they uh, work with um, uh, the defence people who look after Woomera mm -hmm. and um, from time to time have rocket launch campaigns using um, some rockets that are stored there. Uh, these are quite old, they're sort of... Um, Ex-military... Yeah, um, they're, they're, they're not rockets that are meant to go into <clears throat> space or anything, no. but they do have sufficient capacity... Uh, and enough speed and enough strength to actually mm. do a couple of interesting experiments mm. with. So um, yeah, a great test platform for avionics and you know, small science experiments and things like that. Precisely. Yeah, mm. they're very good for that. So ASRI perform an invaluable role, but really um, this should be work that's funded and supported by the Australian federal government. Mm. Um, it should be a line item in the in the budget. And to put things in context, uh, you know, as when asked what a space agency is. I guess most people think of NASA, mm -hmm. which is like the most funded largest space agency in the world. Yeah. But um, many people don't realize that Bangladesh has a space agency mm -hmm. and Vietnam has a space agency. And quite a lot of nations that uh, don't have the, the GDP of Australia yeah. realize the value and importance of maintaining uh, research and ongoing effort in that area of science. Mm -hmm. um, and just a small amount of the funding that would go, as an example, um, to funding, say, uh, sport from the Australian federal budget, let's yep. say 5%, yep. that would be more than enough to be funding an ongoing Australian mm, space program and a space agency. Yeah. Absolutely. And that would just make a huge difference to this kind of research in Australia and actually keep mm. some of that talent from having to go overseas and so they could actually work in cooperation yeah. with other uh, entities, uh, space agencies and space scientists overseas. <laughs> Sorry about the background noise, hopefully you can still hear us. Um, now on that, that subject, a, couple, a year or two ago there was a bit of excitement that there was some initial funding for an agency. Um, so can you tell me what the outcome was with that? I think there was talk at the time of hiring um, 
hiring someone as an executive officer and um, there was going to be a, an office formed, but I'm not sure what the outcome was. Uh, could you clarify that? Absolutely. So um, the funding at the time came about thanks to the um, Kevin Rudd, the Prime Minister at the time, putting some uh, stimulus money aside to try and stimulate uh, research uh, in science. And he put aside uh, $40 million, I think it was, uh, as seed funding for a space policy unit. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the space policy unit uh, discusses um, trying to work out what Australia... Um, it, basically, it, its role is to stimulate space science in mm. Australia, but it's definitely not an agency. The big difference is that an agency actually has a program, mm -hmm. so it's an ongoing collection of goals that need to be met, whereas the space policy unit exists to determine what our policy potentially could be or okay. maybe should be. So it's, uh, it's about exploring some possible ground rules or sure. setting the scope, really. Fingers very, crossed very it might be the, Yeah, mm. it may be the precursor to actually having an agency. And it's mm. fantastic that it exists. It's a great sign of hope. Um, that $40 million was uh, the vast majority, majority of it was sent out as grants, mm -hmm. um, much of which went to various universities. And some of it went to a few um, small organisations uh, in Australia that do um, things like tracking space junk uh, and uh, um, various activities like that. So they, all of those grants went out to the various entities to try and stimulate those businesses and um, in particular academic uh, programs and, and endeavours. Mm -hmm. So the vast majority of it, having gone to universities, fingers crossed, hopefully will um, provide the seed, if you like, for um, growth in space science in Australia. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely not an agency. Yeah. It's the, fingers crossed, the forerunner to an agency, maybe laying the groundwork for yes. what might become an ongoing effort. Engaging interest and you know, providing a mechanism to help that happen. Absolutely. Cool. But to my knowledge, the, the, that money is all now spent, and I don't believe there's actually a line item in the federal government budget at all for space science, mm -hmm. but I believe small amounts of money are being siphoned off from um, industry and innovation um, to assist with various um, ad hoc um, ideas and intentions from time to time, mm -hmm. is my understanding. Okay. So it's definitely, you know, again, it sounds like a broken record, but it's definitely <laughs> not a space agency. It's, um, fingers crossed, something that would make it easier for a space agency to form To come into existence. Yeah, yeah, and for it to be a credible, ongoing, mm -hmm. um, and profitable uh, endeavour. Mm -hmm. When I say profitable, uh, considering overall Australia's involvement in other industries uh, and how we compare with the rest of the world, uh, Australia could expect, uh, if we had a space uh, industry in Australia, um, being supported and guided by a space agency, we could expect to be making... Uh, that industry could be, expect to be making about two and a half billion dollars per annum. Wow! So mm. that's money that's not coming into our economy yeah, at the that's moment. That's a lost opportunity for us right now. Absolutely. So mm. yeah, it's money that um, we're not getting. Yeah. Um, so if people want to know more about Blue and Umbat or White Label Space or any of these things, where should they go and check it out? Um, Lunar Numbat has its own website, which is lunarnumbat.org. So L-U-N-A-R-N-U-M-B-A-T. Um, and White Label Space has its own uh, website as well, which is white, W-H-I-T-E, the colour, whitelabelspace.com. And um, that will be a good starting place. You can certainly find both of us also on Facebook. Um, Friends of Lena Numbat are a group that exists on Facebook. And uh, White Label Space have a very active uh, group as well on Facebook and my understanding is that they'll be organising a competition relatively soon as well, which uh, I believe involves some prizes. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely you can find us there as well. And uh, um, depending on your level of interest, you can drill down and, and get in contact with us through uh, either of those sites, and we'd love to hear from you. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you, John. Much appreciated.